Hey there and welcome, my name is Carlos Beritz and let's start talking about what has been going on in the indie tabletop RPG scene. And as always, I'm not being directly sponsored by anyone mentioned here unless explicitly said or mentioned otherwise. And some links may be affiliate links so that they can benefit me without cost you anything extra. And all the links, they will be in the description together with some timestamps so that you can jump to the point of your preference. Okay, after a long hiatus of like six or seven weeks, we are back and right on Zini month, which seems just fitting because last year we started on Zini quest. And I am happy that this year it expanded into Zin month. So leaving Kickstarter, uh, since Kickstarter is not even doing Zin quest this year, it seems, and moving away from Kickstarter and getting so many other platforms like Kofi, each direct funding and so many others that I can't even list them all. And it makes me really happy for the indie scene. So let's talk about Zine Month. And there are so many interesting projects and the one-stop place for you to get to try and know a global view of it, it's the Zine Month website. It provides some of the basic guidelines for submitting a project for Zine Month and what is Zine Month. And so far, we are not even a week into February and we have already more than 100 or 120 projects listed on the platform, only listed on the platform. There are so many that even are not listed there yet. And you can filter through it uh, and all that jazz that usually helps people to find projects that they like. I will highlight some projects here, but uh, because I am unable to mention them all, but I encourage you to go and seek the website and check if anything there strikes your fancy as well. And the first one that I want to highlight is Moria by Urania Games. And it is, in the creators onwards, a simple role-playing game of ordinary people facing the extraordinary. And it uses a mechanic of multiple dice, starting with the D4 and going up to the D100. So starting with the die with four faces and going up to 100 faces, depending on what you give. As it is a game that leans towards sacrifice. You are doing sacrifices to the divine to try and redeem mankind of, for the destruction that mankind did towards this marvelous world created by the gods. Some of the goals for the funding are also to bring more people into the project. And they have already like Jay Madamba from RPGC, the Southeast Asian tabletop RPG community, or scene actually, responsible for the layout. They have Armanda from RPG Latam, the Latin American tabletop RPG scene that will be doing the layout. And even Misha Panarim, that is also from RPG Latam, that may write a new path for the game if they get to that stretch goal. Another great project is Macborg by Roland Boschnack. It brings mechas to the acclaimed game Morkborg and it continues with the Morkborg vibe of rules light, flavor heavy, and like rules light, flavor heavy design. On top of some extra rules, the Zini will also bring five pre generated mechas as well as rules for creator your own mechas and exclusive ones. In case you are unfamiliar what a mecha is, I don't believe that anyone is, but Either way, mechas for this contest are giant piloted robots, or at least is the simplification for this case. And the campaign is now underway for the Zini to be in full color because it's already part funded. Another title that I want to highlight this week is The Potato King by Evelyn Moreau. It is a scenario for Liminal Horror, a game that we mentioned here before, if I'm not mistaken. And you have three different modes to play it. Occult Investigation, Slices of Life Horror, and Single Session Survival Horror. The scenario takes you through a greasy fast food chain restaurant where a god is being fried and served to the people. And if it wasn't already interesting enough, it features Evelyn's art, which is just marvelous and it has her kind of signature to it. I really believe that you should at least give a look just for the art. There is a bundle going on that is aiming to help a great cause, which is the Solo But Not Alone 2 bundle. It is on the same vibe of last year's, that is everything that is going to be raised after taxes and all, you know, all the jazz, will be used to support Jasper's Game Day, an organization dedicated to suicide prevention. The bundle has more than 100 titles and you can get 
all of them by, for 10 bucks. So you will save like 97% or something and the bundle will continue to run for a month or so. So you still have time to go and support it. It is an itch.io, the link in the description, all that jazz that you already are familiar with. Also talking about great cause, we have Roll for Charity working towards supporting the NHS, the National Health Service of, or actually the UK's public health system. The non-profit organization Roleplay Heaven has a t-shirt campaign. You can buy a Roleplay or Roll for Charity tea t-shirt for 18 pounds from which at least eight pounds will be donated to the NHS charities together. On top of that, a purchase will grant some gifts from some supporters uh, in the form of PDFs, coupons, uh, discounts, all of that, or even some physical books, mainly for the ones that are in the UK. But either way, it's a great thing to support that. The NHS, they need our help. On gems, because there is always a gem around. This time we mentioned the Paper Miniature Gem 3, which is not exactly a tabletop RPG gem, but it is like it, it is to make assets to play, and among other things, tabletop RPGs, but it can also be used for war games and all that. After the success of the two previous ones, I don't see why it would be any different with this third edition of this gem. So if you want to create paper miniatures, submit to it or just follow along. There, they have some useful assets to create your own minis. But I mean, if you have your games and you want minis for your games, you can just follow along the jam and get some of the paper minis that are submitted to it. I always defend or, or support the idea of going to jams perhaps not for submitting your project, but just to see the vibe of the gem, that's something that you want. And then you have lots of projects there that are with the idea that you are looking for. On threads, posts, and so on, because we all have that. I definitely enjoyed this thread by Alan Barr from Gallant Knight Games, where he goes on into budgeting a produ uh, to how to produce a small budget RPG. It includes physical copies, art, layout, and all of that into the budgeting. It was very informative, even more for someone that is trying to get into producing physical tabletop RPGs. And it fits so well with the idea of Zine Month that I really thought that it should be mentioned today in this episode. The thread is very good. You can check it out, the, as always, the link, the description and all that. And another interesting thread, this time by the always amazing Clayton Notice team, talking about some tips. If you are creating your, your first zini, but it can also be useful for some whole timers uh, because it comes as a design wish list, more on the visual design part of things. But even if you don't follow it, don't follow the wish list or all the kind of preferences that they have, it is an interesting read to at least consider the options uh, and why they are mentioning that. And then you can make an informed decision because that's, that's something that it's much better to have the knowledge of the options and then making a decision that just think that there is only one way of doing things. Okay. For today, I guess that's it. If you like the video, like the damn video, share, subscribe. You know how internet works. You can pay me a coffee on coffee. You can buy my games on itch.io. And let me know in the comments if you missed the series, what you would like to see this year. And I will see you all in my next video. So see ya.